Photography is all around us. It all started in the 1600s when the camera obscura was used to project its surroundings in darkened rooms. Now here we are today with thousands of different cameras to choose from and cameras on our phones. Technology has grown enormously. In 1727, Professor J. Schultz was just experimenting, mixing chalk, nitric acid, and silver in a flask. He noticed darkening on the side of the flask when it was exposed to sunlight. It was the accidental creation of the first photosensitive compound. That was, this was the development of the chemical that was used to create photographs. Although his discovery did not provide the means of preserving an image, his later work did. In 1816, the very first permanent photograph was made by Joseph Nisifor Nice, a French inventor. When he combined the camera obscura with photosensitive paper, he called these sun pictures. It wasn't until 1842, though, that the introduction of the first form of photography in journalism came about. This was when illustrations were published in the Illustrated London News. The illustrations were printed with the use of engravings. After this, the development of photojournalism came quickly. During the Crimean War, the Illustrated London News launched the birth of photojournalism by printing pictures of the war taken by Roger Fenton. Fenton was the first war photographer, and his work made way for the future of photojournalism. Matthew Brady followed in Fenton's footsteps and documented the Civil War. The photographs he took were engraved before publication in Harper's Weekly. The topic of war was a popular thing to cover at the time, but these developments in photography sparked interest in public events or tragedies, such as train wrecks or even fires in cities. John Thompson transformed photojournalism even further by partnering up with Adolf Smith, a radical photojournalist in London. Together, they created a monthly magazine called Street Life in London, in which Thompson used photographs of street people combined with text. This established social documentary photography as a form of photojournalism. The golden age of photojournalism are said to have been between the 1930s and 1950s. This was made possible by the development of the 35mm film camera in 1925 and the development of, of the first flash bulbs between 1927 and 1930. These developments in technology really gave photographers a lot of versatility in the field. One of these photographers was Henry Cartier Brusson. He is known by some as the father of photojournalism and a master of candid photography. Brusson was one of the first photojournalists to adapt to the use of the 35mm Leica camera and assisted in the development of street photography. As photojournalism became more popular, newspapers began to incorporate more and more photos into the paper. At the time, though, a lot of newspapers used low-end letter presses that printed low-quality photos with highly smudgeable inks and yellowish-tinted papers. It wasn't until the 1980s that the development of more advanced presses came about. This allowed newspapers to print higher-quality photos on whiter paper. With the decline of photojournalism in the 1970s caused by the seeds of publication, many photojournalists found it necessary to develop professional organizations. The Danish Union of Press Photographers was the first. The development of these professional organizations made way for the development of highly professional groups of photojournalism that, re that relied heavily on a newly developed code of ethics. The future of photojournalism began here and continues to grow as a popular career choice among many professional photographers. Modern day photojournalism owes its success to the dedicated members of past photojournalism as well as the development of the photography products such as the DSLR camera and full digital photo processing. Without these developments, photojournalism would not be what it is today. We hope this presentation educated you a lot about the history of photography and photojournalism. Thank you for watching.